In this series on parenting autistic children, I share my professional knowledge of supporting over a thousand families as well as my personal knowledge as someone autistic. This video explores the question, your needs or theirs? This may sound like an odd question. Many parents probably think that everything they're doing is to meet their child's needs, but they rarely get their own needs met because they're focused so much on their child. It could be that the child has challenging behaviour, the parent is struggling to manage this behaviour and seeks to medicate their child to help their child to calm down and behave better. Yet, the child may be perfectly happy with who they are and how they are. This isn't to say poor or inappropriate behaviour shouldn't be addressed, just that you have to be mindful of the reasons for addressing the behaviour. If the medication works to control the behaviour but makes the child feel like a zombie and it takes away something from them, then this may not have been the best solution. The child may now be behaving, the parent may now feel things are better, and home life may be easier. This may have been a quick and easy solution, but a better solution may have been to take the longer road of helping the child with their behaviour over time. Yet, fundamentally, they remain the same person, equipping them with the skills to manage their own behaviour. Using this example I've just given, there's no hard and fast right or wrong answer. I'm personally in favour of avoiding medication unless absolutely necessary. I prefer people to learn and develop skills, but this is often far more time consuming. The main point is to help parents to look at the decisions that they're making and analyse whether these decisions are focused on the needs of the child or of the parent. If the parent is making the decision to give themselves an easier home life or because they find something upsetting, then they're making the decision to meet their own needs, not the child's. An example of this could be a child who has very few friends and spends most of their time alone. The parent struggles with this and gets upset that their child is often alone, so they make their child attend clubs and different groups and parties, yet the child is actually happy with the amount of socialising that they do. In this case, it's the parent projecting how they feel about things in the world onto their child and making decisions based on this rather than recognising how their child actually feels about things in the world and what help and support they actually want. I wouldn't want parents to feel guilty for putting their needs first at times. If a parent doesn't look after their own health, they won't be in a particularly good position to be able to help their child. It's also natural for us to want to stop suffering, and so if we think someone's suffering, of course we want to stop that. Yet, sometimes, what's seen as suffering by others isn't always experienced as suffering by the person themselves. A personal example of this is when a relationship of mine ended. My friend kept telling me I was obviously bottling up my sadness and that this was unhealthy, that I needed to go out partying, I needed to get drunk and I needed to sleep around. I felt that I didn't need to do any of these things. Telling him this just made him believe more strongly that I was bottling up how I felt, that I should be upset and angry, and I wasn't particularly. He was projecting onto me how he believed he would feel and what he would do as a solution, and he tried to impose this on me. He was well-meaning. He thought I must be suffering and he wanted to help me, except I'm not him, I don't experience the world like he does, and I was happy to be getting on with my life like normal. Another area which seems common for parents to put their needs first is around school. I've worked with many parents who struggle to get their child to school. Some of these parents decide to change the school that the child is attending. Sometimes this is what the child keeps saying that they want. Other times it's something the parent wants because they hope that it will solve the problems perhaps with getting them to school. Sometimes parents will even homeschool the child. There's obviously nothing wrong with homeschooling, but when it's being done because of difficulties getting the child to school, the parent needs to look at whether this is more about making life easier for themselves or about helping to improve the child's education. Even when the child is saying that they want to leave the school, 
this needs to be looked at. Is it really best for the needs for the child? Is it what they say that they want, but are just trying to escape a problem? I've worked with many parents who change their child's school because the child says it's what will make them behave. And they'll give reasons why this will be the case. Yet three or four school changes later, the child still falls back into their same pattern of behaviour after a brief honeymoon period. If the parent wants to make their child happy by removing them from the school, this is the parent meeting their desire to make their child happy, and as a parent, their role is to sometimes make tough decisions, like keeping the child in the school despite the child saying that they want to leave. Leaving the school may be the correct decision, but it should be the correct decision because it's what will be best to meet the needs of the child. Moving to a smaller school, perhaps, or to a more specialist school, or a school which is easier for them to get to, so they perhaps don't arrive at school feeling stressed from the journey, or where the school and the parents feel a fresh start in a new school would be best to help the child settle in and would best help their educational attainment and well being. Just taking some time to think about this question, your needs or theirs, is helpful to do when you're making parenting decisions. In future videos in this series, I'll be sharing further information about supporting your autistic child. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.